Hey, friends and wine lovers. I once heard a pretty cool thought that wine is the only time machine that works. Many of the wines that we drink have been made in the same way and have tasted relatively the same, in some cases for thousands of years. So when we drink certain bottles of wine, we are almost literally transported back to the time and place where they come from. I always find it interesting to hear the stories tied to these wines. For this weekly tasting, we're going back to the old world and back in time to get the inside sip on four famous French wines. And then we get to taste a bit of history. Our wines come from a part of France known as the Rhone, named after a river located in the southeastern corner of the country. Starting in the Swiss Alps, the Rhone runs roughly north to south and flows into the Mediterranean Sea. For the wine lover, the most important stretch of the Rhone is the 125 miles at the south. That's where all the wine is made. And this region is further subdivided into two regions, the north and the south. For this pack, we're going to visit four notable appellations along the Rhone, starting with one in the north and working our way south for the remaining three wines. As is often the case in Europe, wine got its start in the Rhone thanks to the Romans. And of course, that means a strong connection to the Roman Catholic Church. All of these wines that we have here today have ties to religious history. Our first stop is in the northern Rhone, where the river meanders through granite and limestone soils, and in some places the hillsides are so steep that the vineyards are terraced. The weather can be pretty extreme here, freezing cold in the winter and quite hot in the summer. The northern Rhone can be a pretty tough place to grow grapes, and for that reason they only produce about 5% of all the wine made in the Rhone Valley. Fortunately, it happens to be some of the best. The most famous of wines are red, and made predominantly from just one grape, Syrah. This region is the genetic origin of the grape, and it's very apropos that wine lovers consider it to be sort of a spiritual birthplace. Hermitage wine has spiritual roots as well. The vineyards are famous for being home to a medieval crusader who spent his final years here as a hermit. In fact, there's still a small chapel on the hillside where he once lived. Crozier Hermitage wines come from the lands that surround the Hermitage Hill and are known for being much more approachable and value-oriented entry points into the world of Hermitage. It's no coincidence that this is a 90-point wine. I can't wait to taste it. For our next two wines, let's travel about 50 miles downriver to the southern Rhone. This part of the river is known for its hot, dry climate and a treacherous wind known as the Mistral. The Mistral blows through the valley so strong that oftentimes each grapevine has to be staked up for support. Here, the soils are often topped with glacial stones known as galets, which are great for retaining heat and ripening the grapes. Keren and Gigondas are practically next door neighbors and are both located about 10 miles east of the river in an area known as the Côte du Rhone. In this region, the Grenache grape dominates, but these wines are almost always a blend of several red grapes, including Syrah and a lesser known one called Morvedra. Caran is a medieval village that was once home to the Knights Templar. Up until 2016, it was actually part of the generic Côte du Rhone appellation, but Caran was producing wines that were so consistently good that they were upgraded to be allowed to use their own commune name on the bottle. Gigondas has roots in the Roman era, and the town was once a recreational site for soldiers from the Roman Second Legion. Gigondas is sometimes considered to be the little Chateauneuf du Pape, and like CDP, has a coat of arms on the bottle. Furthest south, Chateauneuf du Pape is probably the most famous region in the southern Rhone. Chateauneuf du Pape translates to the new castle of the Pope and refers to a summer retreat that was built in 1309 for Pope Clement V. Clement and his successor both saw the potential for winemaking in this region and planted the first papal vineyards. And to this day, every bottle of Chateauneuf du Pape still bears the papal coat of arms. So let's talk a little bit about the winemaker. Romain Duvernay is a winemaker who started his career in Bordeaux and Burgundy. He fell in love with the wines of the Rhone and partnered up with several different vineyards in the valley to source the grapes for his wines. In France, Romain is what is known as a negociant, somebody who buys grapes from other growers and makes wine under his own label. After what feels like close to a thousand years of waiting, let's finally taste these wines. Let's begin with this 2018 Romain Duvernay Croze Hermitage. This is made with 100% Syrah. Look how deep and intense that color is, and that's uh, coming from the Syrah grape, obviously a very dark grape. All right, let's give that a swirl and a sniff. There's a telltale funk on there, which is typical for Syrah. It almost smells like an animal funk or a barnyard. At 14.5% alcohol, it's a big wine, but it's smooth. 
There's some nice acidity in there that keeps it well balanced. It's got that real strong jelly jar, jammy kind of flavor to it. And another flavor that's typical for Syrah, black pepper. That is a nice, smooth, and I would even say creamy Croza Hermitage, a beautiful entry point into the world of Hermitage wines, and actually probably has some aging potential too. I'd love to see what it tastes like in about five years. This is a 2018 Romain Duvernay Caren. This is made from 80% Grenache and 20% Syrah. The Grenache grape is bringing something different to the mix here. Uh, we're getting more red fruits, more red cherries. Um, it's a little stewed too, almost like pruny in a way. The alcohol in this wine is really contributing to a weight in the mouth when you drink it. It's got this body to it, makes it feel nice and velvety and silky. And it is a young wine, so there is still some fresh fruit in there, but I'm getting more baked fruits. The wine only has 20% Syrah in there, but it's really dominating this wine. It's making it very savory. Well, I've never had a Caran before, so this is my first time and I love it. It's a delicious wine, but I think because of that savoriness, it's gonna be very food friendly. This 2018 Gigondas is made with 70% Grenache, 20% Syrah, and 10% more Vedra. As suspected, the Grenache is really coming on strong here. There's a lot of red berry and cherry flavors coming out. This is a really juicy wine. It's interesting, the 10% more Vedra in here, I think is contributing to a floral character. It almost smells and tastes like roses to me. That is a voluptuous and fruity Gigondas. I would actually describe it as being sort of playful too. It's fun to drink, it just makes you smile. And last, but surely not least, we have this 2018 Romain Duvernay Chateau Neuf du Pape. This is made with 80% Grenache and 20% Syrah. And this particular wine is organic, meaning it's sustainably produced with minimal intervention from the winemaker and no pesticides. And some of the grapes in this wine are from vines that are over 100 years old. Older vines tend to produce more concentrated wines. It's just brimming with fresh cranberry, but also dusty wild herbs. The French actually have a name for that sensation. They call it Garrigue. It's a tannic wine, and I think would benefit from some food to pair with it, help mitigate those tannins a little bit. Um, for 15.5% alcohol, it should be a big wine, but it manages to stay fairly fresh. I suspect it has some oak aging to it, and it finishes on a nice spice note. It's a pleasant sort of cinnamon or nutmeg. This is a delicious Chateau Neuf du Pape, but I think still a little young and could probably benefit from some aging. And now, since we've learned about these wines and actually tasted them as well, let's talk about food pairings because we've got four wonderful recipes from our chef, Tori Salad. And generally speaking, I think all of these recipes would work with any of these wines here, but there may be some that pair better than others, so we'll cover that. The first recipe is Moroccan lamb phyllo pies. Obviously, lamb is a more gamey meat, but that'll partner up very well with the gaminess of the Syrah grape. Also, the exotic spices in these phyllo pies will go perfectly with the wines that have some spice on the finish. A mushroom stuffed pork tenderloin is gonna be a very earthy dish, and I think we'll partner up with a savory wine like this Caran. And then we have a pasta with lamb, mint, and peas. The mint in this dish is really gonna lock up well with those Garrigue flavors and the Chateau Neuf du Pape. And for the dessert lovers, we have a tahini chocolate chip cookie. Tahini has a certain nuttiness to it, almost like peanut butter. And any of these wines here in this lineup would partner well with it, give you the effect almost like, a, dare I say, a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, which is pretty awesome. Drinking wine is fun, but it can be even better when you have the tools you need to properly appreciate it. That includes knowing the interesting stories and history inside the bottle. Thanks so much for joining me today. And if you buy this pack or anything through Wine Still Sold Out, be sure to use my special promo code to save yourself $10 at checkout. I'm Mark Subsick. Cheers.